Hi, it's Lois here again with part 2 of the Facebook Timeline Cover and Profile Image Tutorial, which is also designed as a fun way to get you acquainted with GIMP, the fantastic free image editing software. In parts 2 and 3 you're going to take selections of two of your own photographs and design your first customised cover image and coordinating profile pic for your Facebook page. And here in part 2 we're going to concentrate on the cover image. So let's get started right away. First you're going to need to select the original images you want to use, one for the cover image and one for the profile pic, which obviously would normally have you yourself in it. I'm going to use some photos I took on a holiday in Herefordshire in November 2012 of the National Trust Brockhampton Estate. So once you've decided on the images you want to use, right click on the original you're going to use for the cover image and then select Edit with GIMP. This will open GIMP if it isn't already open and then open your image within it. Then we're going to take that rectangle selection tool and set the aspect ratio to 851 by 315. To do that you just type in 851 then a colon and then 315. And make sure that this box here is checked and that it says aspect ratio in that drop down box beside it. And I'll just show you here that the aspect ratio is preserved every time I go to make a selection. If I uncheck the box, you can see that I can make any shape I want with the tool. Right, we're going to make sure the box is checked and I'm going to go right across the image here. You may want to take a smaller selection of your image and that's fine, just as long as it's at least 851 pixels wide. Once you've drawn the shape, you can put your mouse inside the shape and drag it into position. As this is a very simple example, we don't need to use a template at this stage, but I am bearing in mind the links that Facebook puts over the image. Now I want the whole height of the house in the picture behind this lovely gatehouse, which is what sees the visitors over the moat. I do want the chimney fully in the selection, but I also need enough space below the building for those links. So I need as much space at the bottom as possible. And that nasty, rather unattractive bit on the left there with the more modern buildings won't be a problem because that's going to end up behind the profile image. So once you're happy with your selection, yep, you've probably guessed it by now, we want edit, copy, and then file create from clipboard and now we're going to go and get a copy of our template so it's sitting there waiting so again right click on the image and then select open with GIMP you'll see the GIMP icon on the taskbar flash orange which tells you the image is opened in the program if we open it up we can see the template is sitting there with the other files we have open in the program right I'm gonna do a little bit of editing here before I reduce the size this is way more than 851 pixels wide. We've just got that aspect ratio here. And I want to make a few changes and introduce you to some of the tools in GIMP before I resize the image. I'm going to start with the color balance. That's colors, color balance. Now you're never going to want to overdo this <laughs> unless you're after some pretty drastic effects to your image. I'm just going to make some changes to the shadows. To be able to see the changes that you can make to the image, you will need to make sure that the preview box at the bottom is checked. Do experiment with the sliders so you can see what happens, but you probably won't want to end up with too drastic a change here. If you have the time, pause the video and have a play around with the midtones and highlights just to get a feel for what this tool can do. You may well find that you don't want to make any changes at all to your image, but this is so that you get to know a few of the tools that that GIMP's got in its arsenal. So if you can, do spend a few minutes to explore. Okay, I'm happy with that. Once you're happy, just click OK and the changes will be made to your image. Now I'm going to go for the Hue Saturation tool, 
because I would like what little green there is in this picture, which was taken in November, to be that little bit more prominent. So that's colours, hue, saturation. And I'm going to select green here. Again, if you have the time, pause the video to experiment here with the other colours and see what happens when you select master. Or make notes to come back afterwards and have a play around. If I go to the lightness control and take the slider from one end of the scale to the other, you can see in the image that it's the green colour that's being affected. OK, I'm going to increase the brightness and saturation here quite a bit because I want the image to make me feel how I felt the day I was there. And for me, this is the way I'm going to achieve that. It did look brighter on the day, it was just that the light that was available has affected the photograph. Again, you may not want to edit the saturation of any of the colours in your image, but it's useful to know that the option's there for the future. It can be a brilliant tool to use. And again, once you're happy, just click OK. Right, I'm happy now and I'm going to reduce the size of the image. If I go down to increase the view from 33.3% to 100%, you're going to see just how large this image is. So we're going to go to Image, Scale Image. And as you can see, the image is actually 3,252 pixels wide and we only want it to be 851. So we're going to make sure that this link here is together so we preserve the aspect ratio. If you click on it, it will separate and then you can change the width and height separately. So if this is open, click on it to close it first. Type 851 and then you don't have to, but if you just click in the height box, you'll see that it will automatically change to 315. That's because it's the aspect ratio we used when we took the selection out from the original image. So all we need to do now is click scale and that's it, we're done. I'm just going to add a little bit of sharpness to the image after reducing it so much in size. So that is filters, it comes under the filters and sharpen is under enhance. But because that was the last filter I used, I've got the option here to repeat sharpen and that will just add the same amount of sharpness to this image as I used the last time I used it. Or I can re-show sharpen, which means that I can adjust the amount but I don't need to worry about where it is and go the long way around to find it. And that option is always there for the last filter you use, which is really useful if you're using a filter to edit a batch of images for any particular project. And finally, I'm just going to make a quick adjustment to the brightness and contrast of the finished image. So that's colours again, and then brightness and contrast, believe it or not. Again, you may not feel the need at all to edit the brightness or contrast of your own image, but if you do have a play around of all the features I cover here, it will give you a good feel for the program. And once you know the features are there, even if you forget where to find them, you can do a quick Google search and rediscover where it is, and maybe even find some other useful tutorials in the process. And I will try to list all the features covered in each video in this tutorial in the descriptions here on YouTube for you. Now I'm going to copy the template image and paste it over the new cover image just to check that it all works OK. This was a very simple single image so I could get away with just bearing in mind where the links and profile image are positioned over the cover image but later on we're going to create a cover image that requires more accuracy and then we'll be importing the template as a layer earlier on so we can work around it. I'm just going to make that into a new layer so that we can see it without the selection outline and that's fine. As you can see it's not taking too much away from the important elements of the selection and I'm quite happy with that. Okay now all we've got to do is save it. So I'm going to create a folder to save it to. I'm going to create a folder and call it Brockhampton Estate. And just to keep things organised, because I probably will get around to using some other images from that holiday at some time, I'm going to create another folder and call it Herefordshire 2012. And then I'm just going to drag the Brockhampton Estate folder into the Herefordshire one.
So all that's left to do now is to export the new timeline cover image and save it into the folder that I've created. We'll use the export option again, but this time you can save the image as a JPEG if you prefer, which might result in a slightly smaller file size. The important thing is to remember to use the export option rather than the save or save as, as you were probably used to using in most other programs. And that's it, we're all done. Hope you enjoyed the video and why not create a few more timeline images to consolidate what you've learnt here before moving on to part 3 where I'll show you a few tips for creating your profile images to go with them. See you then!